I would like you to please welcome Andre Batista. So, hello everybody. Um, first of all, thank you for inviting me to be here to raise some cyber awareness. So, uh, I was voted the most valuable hacker on a competition this year uh, on the United States. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit better uh, on this presentation. And I'm also a professor in the University of Porto and a researcher uh, in this field. So, what is a hacker? Is it a bad guy? Is it a good guy? Or both? Or My favorite def definition of a hacker is one person that enjoys the intellectual challenge of creatively overcoming limitations. <laughs> uh, some of you are probably hackers and you didn't know. Uh, th that's, that's the definition. So information security is rapidly evolving and technology is evolving um, really fast. Uh, we have kids like with four years old uh, for example, my cousin uh, knows how to switch the Wi-Fi on the tablet on and off, and she knows how to install games and, and whatever. Uh, crazy world. Um, and I, I want you to show a demo. Hopefully it will work, you know, how these things uh, uh, go sometimes. But um, these two questions. Uh, do you install apps for untrusted sources? Like you, you see an advertisement, uh, an app and you just download and install a app, you don't, um, but, but some people uh, do that. Um, and do you use, like, you don't, don't want to pay for an app and you just download a, a, a free version of the app? Uh, and also, and more importantly, um, is your mobile phone or computer updated? If it's not, uh, a hacker can do some nasty stuff. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, a scenario where uh, I have this mobile phone, uh, which is, uh, just a moment, okay. Just a moment, please. Okay, so I'm running an exploit uh, against this mobile phone, which is uh, outdated. And now, uh, I want to show you what an attacker can do. Uh, so basically, uh, I can, for instance, like record uh, the screen. Oh, I need to switch the network, I'm sorry. Okay. So for instance, I can um, record the screen of the mobile phone and spy on the user. I'm just opening Twitter, for example, and hopefully it will work. <laughs> uh, okay, it seems it worked. So here you have my screen uh, on Twitter, and uh, I'm spying on this phone remotely, no wires. And uh, for example, we can just dump the messages. I, I have three messages here. Uh, so I can just spy on the user and inspect the call logs and whatever. And I also, I can um, access the camera Okay, need to fix something here, okay. <laughs> and here you are. <laughs> On my hacking hacker screen. Uh, and a bunch of other functions and uh, also kind of scary, I can um, try to uh, get the, the position of the, the, loca uh, the location of the user. Uh, the, it, this was running, but I'm not sure if it, it will work right now. 
Um, it's kind of slow. Need to switch my network. It's really slow. Okay, we are in Frankfurt on the Hilton Hotel. So that's it. I can uh, an attacker can just spy on uh, on your life every day, and you don't know. So just update your mobile phones. And also, I I I used an uh, Android phone, uh, Samsung. Uh, if you have a Samsung, if you uh, have the system updated, uh, it's it's possible, but it will be much harder because this code that exploits this vulnerability is not publicly available. So, how to protect your organization and, uh, against the, the cyber risk? So, uh, I have these measures, and there are many more. Uh, but first of all, you, you should really secure your networks because if an attacker uh, stops his car near your company or whatever, uh, he can try to uh, get access into the local network and uh, from there he can just launch uh, attacks uh, on the local, local network. Also, uh, I've heard some people here telling me, uh, so I received an email from a colleague but he didn't send it. And uh, the thing is, like, organizations uh, use custom email uh, services. But the IT department sometimes forget uh, to implement proper uh, measures against spoofing. Also, you should really have backups because uh, even with all these countermeasures, uh, you could be compromised uh, and, you know, ransomware, uh, all your data could be destroyed and you should have uh, backups every day. Also, update your so software, obviously. Um, penetration tests, which are a, a good method to find vulnerabilities, hire the hackers to find vulnerabilities, and also implement standards to enhance, like, uh, uh, physical security uh, and the uh, awareness of the employees. But there is a new model nowadays. It's called the bug bounties. So it's basically hacker powered security. Um, you basically, you pay hackers to hack you and you pay per vulnerability. So basically this is a, a technique that uses the power of the crowd, of the crowd of hackers. Uh, and they can identify high-value bugs for your business uh, with impact, like information disclosure uh, and data breaches and stuff like that. Uh, and there are many companies and organizations implementing this model already. For example, uh, Jeffrey from uh, General Motors says that hackers have become an essential part of our security ecosystem. And also the director of the Air Force Digital Service of the United States <laughs> Uh, says that the return of investment is incredible, both in terms of cost and in terms of making government assets more secure. And some statistics, uh, for instance, we have the, the top bounty awards by industry. Uh, the government is paying for a critical vulnerability on average 3K uh, dollars for, vulnerability, for a, a critical vulnerability. But we have the giants on technology paying uh, for a critical vulnerability, one vulnerability to one researcher, uh, 13 uh, grand. And there are so many companies doing this already, like Facebook, Dropbox, Google, Twitter, the DOD, and more. And there are some banks uh, as well in Europe um, implementing this, this model. So basically, your biggest ally becomes uh, your uh, biggest enemy becomes your greatest ally. And I have a video here about um, a competition, a live hacking ducks. competition. Uh, I was there, uh, it was in Las Vegas uh, this year, and we basically, uh, they hired us to hack the, the DOD and the Marines. So I'm just going to play this video because it explains the, how this is good for, uh, for government. Beneath and, the glimmering uh, lights companies. and noisy casinos, hackers. The best in the world take aim at America's military. That is my, yep, that's my work email. For one night only, the Department of Defense recruiting the world's top 100 hackers to try and find vulnerabilities before America's adversaries like Russia and China. And just describe to me what you just found. It was essentially where all the military is located. If they're active duty. It's called a bug bounty. 
cash paid out for exposing gaps in the Marines' public websites. What's your reaction to what he just found? Reaction is I got work to do as soon as I get back to uh, Fort Meade. Yeah, we're going to have to fix all that. Through the night, it happened over and over, 75 times. So I'm looking for files that may contain, contain sensitive data, such as databases. We have not seen this yet. One of the hackers has been asked to stop what he's doing after gaining access to a secured site. But now, with Marines standing around watching, he's being allowed to continue on to see just how far he can go. Hour by hour, the bounties pile up. More than $80,000 paid out. Every dollar paid, an invaluable investment in making America's military stronger in cyberspace. How serious are these cyber breaches? Unfortunately, they can be very, very serious. And so far, we haven't had any loss of life or any big physical damage. But unfortunately, it's probably likely that it will happen. An unusual partnership. Marines and hackers united for a common cause, securing the nation against cyber threats. Tammy Leitner, NBC News, Las Vegas. We should probably do the same here. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit just to raise a, a more cyber awareness um, because we are talking here about like insurance companies, banks, and more, uh, and governments. Um, and we have a market uh, for uh, unknown vulnerabilities. So, um, these are called the zero-day exploits. Basically, an attacker can use this weapon to access a device uh, remotely and silently uh, without any user interaction, uh, even if the software is updated. So, and governments and intelligence agencies buy actively and develop zero days. For example, NSA, CIA have been stockpiling these weapons over the past years. And, uh, but the thing is, like, we are not going to be the targets of these weapons because uh, they are really hard to find uh, and um, they cost a lot of money. But they are used uh, against other governments, terrorists, and other valuable or important targets. They are hard to detect and prevent, but governments can analyze and reuse them after an attack. So basically, if a government is going to use uh, this weapon against another government, uh, they, will, they will basically spend a, a weapon. Um, it's, a, it's a growing market. I have a, a table here. For example, uh, an exploit, a zero day, that uh, allows an attacker to access remotely a Windows machine. Uh, this is the table for a uh, legal zero day market that uh, is called Zerodium, that basically buys the zero days and sells the zero days to governments. The price is like uh, three uh, thousand, um, $300,000. dollars. But if we are, we are, we talk about the mobile devices. These values, for example, for an iPhone remote access, uh, they pay one and a half million dollars for a remote jailbreak, uh, remote code execution on the iPhones. And this is not the zero-day black market because there is a black market for these weapons. So let's make the cyberspace uh, a safer place, and thank you very much.